Good night. See ya. Good night. See you. So, uh, uh, I will talk about how to select an open source project for yourself. Uh, so I'll share my thoughts uh, and what I did for joining open source community. Uh, I started with Linux. Before that, mm, I was very new to computers. Uh, I was only doing electronics and all that. So you just have to use a, pro a project before contributing to it. Be before you know, uh, you contribute to a lot of projects, then you get to know how to do specific things which are very important for might be very important for or an organization like uh, in biopathon you cannot give a push or a, create a pull request without running flag 8 with python so i would like you guys to go out find some projects there are a lot of projects you can find on octobers.github.io which are very famous or you can just take on your own like uh, on liking you can go to google chrome or whatever project you like then go to the issues section i can show you how you can do that so like for this git ignore repository you can You can see uh, there are a lot of all already open pull requests, but there there is no issues tab. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll share the tab later. I have included a very very nice curated list for popular topics on GitHub. You can also check trending GitHub reports where most of the contributors are contributing to. Very trending. Uh, then you can also look for opportunities for contribution if you found a bug or you want to create a similar project but it is already on the GitHub. You can contribute to the project instead of creating a new one. You can also contribute to open source projects without code. So you can give suggestions and you can find a guide, contribution guide here. So I'll talk about the GitHub Git workflow. You, you can also use GitHub uh, visual interface for all this, but it is nice to have a command line interface. So for every project I contribute to these are the basic things i always keep in mind so uh, there are some suggestions here which you can read on your own uh, i'll talk about the github wor git workflow before contributing to any project i fork the repo you if you want to use a project don't ever like download and re-upload it it is not very ethical just fork the repo clone it on your machine using git clone then fork the repo link your own link like github.com slash your name slash the project name not the original link then you should create a upstream <coughs> remote upstream branch using the original report uh, repo link then you should create a, Pull all the recently updated files, you can say, using git pull upstream master. So it will download all the files in origin master, which is which is the main like uh, branch you are working on. So you should not be editing anything on the main branch, which is origin master. You should always create a branch like here you can see the command for creating my work branch, which will create a new branch with this name. Uh, for changing over to the branch you created, 
you should type in get git checkout and then the branch name you can also do this for git checkout and master then you will come back to your origin master after doing that you just do your work and then you can type in git push my work branch or whatever name you have given to your branch then origin this is very important because if you are going to type any other name here like upstream it will not allow you to do that until you are a member of the project that's all for the git workflow you can uh, ask any questions if you have after the presentation sorry for the background noise so marchin will take different open source licenses topic marchin sure thank you uh deepak um so so basically um i'll, I'll cover licenses um because uh, this is I feel like this is something that um, pretty much most of us uh, treat as obsolete or not important. I think it is important. And I, I would like to talk about the flavors of licenses that are available out there. So basically the you know, best known GNU GPL version two that was originally created a long, long time ago actually and forces us to um, basically when 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 you take project that have that has this license and you contribute um, uh, w whatever changes you you do there right uh, and you'd like to share the results with somebody like I don't know take it uh, take the source code make some changes, compile it, and uh, and uh, share the binaries with somebody, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, basically, the GPL enforces you to share the binaries along with the source code. So this is the main, uh, uh, the main one of the main constraints. So if you take the GPL project, then you have to um, if you want to give it to somebody, you have to um, do it in in open source form as well. So this is one 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 of the major constraints of these kind of licenses. The other the others are that uh, if you take the source code of GPL and you add something to it, the final code, the code that you took and the code that you actually added by yourself must be also the GPL. So basically you can uh, only add uh, the information that you are an author of parts of the code, but basically this is it. Uh, the, uh, the code uh, license that, uh, that is already GPL'd uh, must remain GPL. Um, so if you are working in commercial uh, projects, it, it is uh, it is very bad license for you because basically you cannot leverage uh, commercially. Uh, so if you are developing something commercially and you want to leverage open source, you cannot deliver commercial product based on, on this. You have to, whatever you have bundled in open source project, you have to release it in open source form as well. Um, so basically this is like about GPL2, GPL version two and three. But of course, um, uh, there are also uh, permissive licenses available out there. Uh, so as an example, uh, you can take MIT or Apache or BSD. And basically it, 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 uh, it says uh, uh, these, these licenses allows you to do with the source code pretty much whatever you want. Actually, you can redistribute it in, in, in even in BST, uh, 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 you, you can do whatever you want, meaning you can take the source, you can modify, you can release uh, to the public or not, you can uh, redistribute in binary form, it's actually up to you. And, um, and there are of course some, uh, some parts or uh, some, some licenses that are in the middle, like uh, there is lesser, lesser GPL. 
uh, that actually enables you to uh, l link uh, open source. Uh, it is uh, it is for um, um, uh, it enables you to link open source libraries. So, it, which means this uh, this LGPL uh, license projects you can <coughs> link uh, with your closed source. Uh, but you cannot actually, but w whatever change you make this LGPL code, you have to publish it as well. So if you are using only the binary form of the LGPL uh, and link to your application, is it, it, it is permissive. So Deepak actually opened the web, web page uh, that is very nice and very intuitive and guides you through how to pick up uh, the right license for you. So whenever you were working within the community or you want to simple and permissive, you can go to this page and you know pick up the the the, the license that is um, that is the best for for your project. And it is very easy to to select one. So uh, basically, um, I would. I would speak a lot more about licenses and uh, different exceptions, um, but I was asked actually to, to prepare or to cover it uh, in the different presentation. Uh, so maybe, may, maybe if there are any questions, I, will, uh, I can answer it uh, during Q&A, uh, but uh, I think it would be a good idea to actually cover the licensing if anyone is interested in the separate presentation because this is a very huge topic. So go on, Deepak. Okay, so we we, we are going to talk about the benefits it's of learning uh, open source. Uh, Martin, Marek, and Edgardo, we all are going to share our, like uh, what we learned from doing all this for me. Uh, I learned a lot about software testing and mainly the best thing I ever happened to me during open source initiative, like uh, initiative from myself. Uh, it was con communicating to a lot of people and get to know how you can deliver very good software in very short amount of time uh, and how you can you should always do like get suggestions from everybody in the project and that's all from my side for me actually um i i i contributed for various of reasons to open source uh the first and major reason is i use plenty of open source applications so if i don't like a feature or or i i i'm angry about the bug that is per persi that persists in the application i just try to figure out what is going on there and try to fix it so this is my one of the primary reasons to contribute and the the other the other reason for contributing for instance is actually um i would tell you the story so i'm part, i'm volunteering in raspberry pi um i'm translating some some you know some projects for the kids and uh, actually i gave um, my daughter the computer with raspbian linux based on uh, raspberry pi but uh, the problem was that uh, actually she does not know yet English well, and and I thought, okay, I can fix this. I have, uh, you know, I I I actually uh, took the application that was not translated. I fixed it. I con I I contributed back, and now, you know, everyone else that is in the same situation could leverage uh, leverage what I did. So basically, this is what I did. I did it for my um, for my kid. That's so nice. I'll go next. Okay. Okay. Um, for for my stuff, uh, it mostly helped me out with debugging. 
So for example, I spend a lot of time in Linux Mint. So whenever I would see an issue, for example, with a menu not working or something not responding, I would usually send a request to see to debug it. And I've actually gotten used to debugging a lot because that's been something that I've been working on because I've never really thought about the idea of improving on code. It was just more about when I used to start as a web developer, I never really thought about debugging. Mostly it was just me writing the code. I never thought about, well, let's see if you need to fix the issues with your code. But as time went by, I, with learning open source, I started to debug a lot more. And that's helped me a lot more as a programmer because that's definitely the skill that you want to have when you want to go into open source, especially if you're working on a huge project because sometimes things won't work correctly. So your debugging skills will be necessary in many cases. So that's just, that's for my point is, is why I benefited a lot from open source. Okay, um, I'm gonna share my side of uh, the thing. I, I think that like the others, uh, um, open source, uh, first of all, you can help others with open source without actually knowing uh, how to code. Uh, I uh, um, motivated my friend to work on uh, translation for others, because uh, although it was from Czech to Polish, probably, yes, from Czech to Polish. So it was uh, quite uh, interesting to see a uh, person who has no idea about uh, uh, programming help others by helping to open source project. Well, uh, it was also connected to my uh, few projects. Uh, so uh, by asking other person, I also got uh, uh, profits for myself. I mean, profit in uh, meaning of uh, code, not, not money, right? It, it was all totally open source and free uh, code. And uh, what's more, when uh, others didn't mention about why, why you should learn Git because Git is a powerful tool and uh, actually you have to know any version control. It's uh, impossible to work as a programmer without it. And uh, Git is, well, it's most popular, so why not use it right now? And uh, what's interesting is that uh, GitHub is not only for programming projects, right? When you uh, write your uh, thesis, for example, thesis for, uh, for your university, you could uh, also uh, easily put, uh, let's say, uh, when you write in LaTeX, you could uh, also put uh, your uh, code on uh, in a repository which uh, allows you to work uh, more freely on it. Uh, also, when you want to, imp uh, what uh, Edgardo uh, mentioned, that when you work on uh, open source project, you learn new things, right? Because uh, debugging is also important. But uh, for me, it's most important when uh, I uh, try to learn uh, test drive development. Uh, I mean, without, uh, I don't think it's it, it could be possible to do it without, uh, knowing uh, version control because uh, it's structured uh, in the way which is uh, which leverages uh, the version control you use in in this case uh, git so i think that's all okay thank you guys so the first contribution i did was also not with code it was just a suggestion for ui design in blender 2.8 so uh, now I will talk about GSOC and other summer of code projects going on. Like, uh, this is the best time you can prepare for GSOC if you have not started preparing already. You can look at the organi past organizations from 2019. There is also a guide from Geeks for Geeks. And 
there is also a medium post for GSOC, but there are also also other summer of code uh, competitions. So my idea is you should increase your chances of getting your project accepted. For that, you should always try different projects before submitting your proposal. I would like to suggest you to go to this past organization page and find five organization at least, then find five projects from those five organization, individual projects, go through the code, look at them and find out what is the like level of the code other people have written for those projects. Then you can curate a list of all the projects they are accepting this session or for 2020. So find out five projects from those organization which they are accepting for 2020. Look for similar codes or from the past because there are also projects that are continuation of other projects done already in the past. So you can do that. At the end, you have the chance of submitting three proposals. So after planning ahead, like planning with five projects, you know what are you comfortable with and you can easily find three main projects you want to focus on this summer. Just create a proposal for it. But the main thing is you should always communicate with your mentors. Go ahead and do cold mailing to mentors you think are very responsive and will answer questions. And you can also, like you can directly uh, mail them or you can go to the project and you can also tag the people if you have found any issue in the project during your evaluation of the code. They will also be happy to help there. So that's all. You just communicate a lot, find five projects, curate a list of three projects at the end for 2020 and you create a proposal. You can also get uh, past proposals. And many of them uh, you can find on GitHub or any other site. You can also find medium post for uh, GitHub, uh, uh, sorry. GitHub repos uh, are not very easy to find, but you can find medium posts easily of past uh, students uh, who contributed to lots of open source organizations in GSOC. So I'll open this link for other open source programs. Sorry. You guys can see the open source program list. Marik, Marichin, Edgardo, you can see that? Uh, yes. Okay. So, yes. There are a lot of open source competitions going on you you can get stipend also some of them provide stipend some of them do not but go ahead and uh, look at look into it uh, gsoc is a very famous summer of code competition if you are using linux you can find a lot of organizations that provide uh, your desktop environments also like <clears throat> do a lot of competitions for open source like GNOME, KDE, XORG, Linux Foundation itself and others. Please do check it out. And if you are a student, I, I highly recommend you to go to student developer program and you can find the pro account. You can get the pro account if you have a university email. It is also available for teachers, I guess, but I don't know. I'm not sure. That's all for today. If you have any questions, please let us know.
que... Okay, I'll give a quick summary. If you guys have any questions, find questions now. You can just unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can just type your questions in chat. Okay, a student already have a question. Can you cite some examples where the repo was forked and it was successful? Uh, I don't have a mic. Okay. Please ask a question. Can I have the slides, please? Sorry. So Ashwin want us to do an. Uh, so How can I obtain the slides, please? Sorry, I'm not getting the question. For Ashwin's questions, uh, let's suppose if you want to fork this, you can directly uh, click on the fork button and you can choose where do you want to fork it. I'm forking it uh, on my account. So it, it is just I have successfully forked the repo. That's all you can try it on your own. Okay, uh, Oh, uh, uh, Ashwin is asking about uh, any project with which were uh, forked and became uh, famous. Well, oh. as I said, uh, it's it. it uh, one example is Chrome because from what I remember, it was forked as uh, from Chromium. Chromium, right. Uh, there was also uh, so so actually Chrome um, so Chromium is um, uh, a fork of Chrome, right? Well, well no, no, Chromium is actually um, uh, a web browser uh, open source version, and Chrome is actually based on Chromium. And uh, this is this this is Chrome actually adds some proprietary elements to, to Chromium and become Chrome. So basically this is the same browser, uh, but one is uh, developed by, by Google. And of course, Google contributes to Chromium as well. So Chrome is based on Chromium. So this is not, not a fork in that sense. Uh, yeah, but it's based on, let's say. Anna Scott yeah, is asking, are there any courtesy, courtesy rules for creating pull requests? Uh, well, okay. uh, you, there is, uh, when it Hello. comes about, it's about a big project. Okay. Mark, please uh, unmute yourself if you want to answer the question. Sorry, I was talking to the uh, muted. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Anna Scott, for uh, well, when it comes to big projects, uh, it could be uh, well, I wouldn't say rude, but uh, unneeded to uh, introduce new. Um, new functionalities which are not uh, requested by users previously and uh, it could be problematic for the uh, group which manage uh, manages it because uh, sometimes so pe some people think that well i uh, fixed something and uh, uh, i improve oh well i would uh, say not fixed because it's suggest it's there is a bug uh, let's say you uh, think that uh, you will create something which uh, works better because it uh, uh, has better complexity or, or something, but then uh, it may turn out that there is a reason for uh, existing code in such form it exists. So uh, it could be actually... Uh, 
the pull request would be wouldn't be accepted uh, in this case. Uh, there are cases like this. Uh, well, also remember, like uh, the Deepak said, uh, don't uh, uh, give pull requests on uh, master branch, right? You don't want to do it because it's it's totally wrong. I I, I think Martin would be more more knowledge to say about courtesy rules well yeah so actually what we haven't specified here about pull requests um, uh, and uh, actually about the commits is uh, that uh, um, the, there are some rules how you format your messages to the changes you made in the code so basically there is a format some some sometimes format required that uh, from the projects how you should uh, put uh, the, the the comments um, uh, that describes your work. And uh, there are some standard formats, there are some type of templates available out there. Uh, so this is one of, uh, this is one of, uh, of one of Cortereza rules to actually adjust your, um, your, um, your participation into the culture of the of the project because you may find out that some projects are from time to time different they uh, they come up with with their own let's say uh, custom uh, uh, specific things they want you to contribute in in uh, in that or the other way so uh, definitely first you should should look for an advices in some guidance that is that are available out there and and uh, actually um, uh, uh, adjust your um, your code or your um, <coughs> or your or your comments to to the to, to whatever is required by by the project so for instance there are rules uh, in yeah, the we'll code itself that. you you should uh, probably format your code in the nice way that is required by this or the other project. So I don't think of anything else here right uh, now. Are there any other questions maybe? Okay. Uh, Strang want to ask any, some questions, I guess. He's raising hand. Uh, yeah, hello. Hello. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so my question is, uh, in uh, in GitHub, uh, there is a section called uh, contributors. So uh, how do I how do I become a part of the uh, contributors team? I, I, I like uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of names, and how do I get my name in there? Oh. So contributors are those people who contributed to project. That is uh, clear, but you should. Uh, create a pull request and the pull request must be accepted by the owners of the project. Then only the, your name will be uh, like listed on the contributors list. Also, okay. also when the contributor list is uh, quite big, it only lists uh, 100 uh, uh, biggest contributors, I, I think. So, uh, uh, that way it depends on uh, amount of your uh, pull request and uh, amount of your co contribution actually right oh, okay agnes right. agnes asked about uh, how you can keep your local repository up to date agnes you can just create a remote branch using get uh, git remote add upstream then the original link for the project not your uh, forked uh, version and then you can just type git pull upstream master that will uh, update all the files on your local machine any questions <laughs> Okay, Shitij asked uh, if I complete the Intel scholarship and I add it to the resume, then is there any chance 
that I got selected in GSOC. It increases your chances of getting into the GSOC, but it uh, depends on the project. Like if the project is related to AI uh, and how, how can you show them that you participated in the uh, AI scholarship and I guess you should create some repository where you can list all the things you have done during the scholarship that make sure that you learn something there uh, that will definitely help uh, because that way you are showing that you know how to use github and i will definitely say you should contribute to uh, some open source project you can choose any but uh, that way you shows that you can you know how to contribute using git and github so that's all important to get uh, uh, one thing to mention, remember that you can't actually put uh, your code from the uh, scholarship on the public repository in, on GitHub because it's, uh, well, I remember Brenda was saying it's not yes, allowed. Yes. You, you cannot, you cannot publicize, like make it public, their material, it is against the rules, but uh, you can create some project of your own using all the technologies you have learned in during the inter scholarship that will help definitely uh, okay uh, anna scott is asking how to create pull from command line actually you just have to use the yeah. Uh, yeah. use the um, command is uh, which is right written on this uh, slide just <laughs> git pull and uh, in this case, upstream master. Yes, and of course. Okay, Aravind asking about the Git GitHub Student Developer Pack. It is very simple. Just go to the link and fill the form. You will get it. Uh, Zarin is asking if there are an, another other uh, programs like GSOC. Yes, there are a lot of programs like GSOC. You can find them uh, on this link. I'll share the presentation with you guys uh, on our study group. Okay. Praveen is asking about upstream and downstream. I'm not sure what you are asking, but for the things I know, uh, I just give a, like, Upstream is just a name for the branch, which is the official branch. Uh, and I just make it uh, like add it to the remote branch and I create a pull request. If uh, Marcin, Mark, Edgardo, you know about upstream.